Well everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things. Going to finally end up here showing you one of the great discoveries I made in Algo Do, which is how to take something you scribble on a sheet of paper or a scanner or from another program that consists of a set of shapes and get it into the geometry of Algo Do. I am recording on a MacBook Pro using QuickTime Player. Uh, when you do that, you actually would like to get your recording area to be something standard on YouTube, so this is not coming in as high dev uh, as it should be, but high def as it should be. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and just draw a shape right there. And when you draw these shapes, you'd like to know what your shape of, you know, a standard shape. One great thing about SketchUp is when you drag a box across here, it snaps to either square or to the golden rectangle. So your eye should start to learn how to kind of appreciate the golden rectangle or know uh, what those ratios are, but I'll just kind of lay that out that as it is. And what you're going to do now is you're going to right click on that and you're going to go to appearance and you're going to go and find a PNG or a JPEG file that is in fact a set of shapes. So in this case uh, there's one there that I've got pulled already. Very often you might want to go up to where you're storing your drawings, but I'm just going to go ahead and pick that there. You notice there I've got sets of shapes out there. Now all I've got to do is right click, go back to uh, appearance, and click on generate geometry from texture. and you notice there what it did I'm gonna turn this on right now it actually went and created a bunch of small shapes little boxes in this case from what you had drafted I'm gonna go here and back we're gonna zoom into those and I'll show you what it has a bit of a problem in that it didn't make little squares out of them you can actually fix that because depending on how you're gonna do this I'm gonna go grab this so I'm gonna select all of them And now if I right click over them and I go to geometric actions, transform into circle or transform into box, I guess I'll do that. Now when I go into each of these, I guess they haven't transformed them all into boxes, but you can transform the individuals. Try that again. This time I'll transform into circles. I'm going to go ahead and select them all. I'm hoping it grabbed. I'm right clicking over the top of one of them. I'm going to go to geometry actions and I'm going to transform into circle. And we'll see whether this in fact that happened. It did not. Well, be that as it may, uh, you should be able to go be able to transform them into something. But for now, they're actually acting fine. So I'm going to just show you there is eventually, sorry for the fan working there, go with a new scene. There is a limit on what you can do with this. I'm going to once again draw a box, bring in an image by right click, appearance find a texture in this case I've got basically a set of 13 things iterated 13 more times would be 169 things I think when I click on that you can see I have something laid out there but this time when I do right click appearance generate geometry from texture it doesn't necessarily work so there is some limit in terms of what you're going to what what it's going to be able to process i would suggest doing this on organizational charts uh, and then bringing pictures in on top i would you know i would suggest doing it on a football squad of zeros and boxes uh, there's all kinds of different ways that we differentiate shapes and you'll see later on one of the great things uh, of the tools that is going to quickly, quickly, um, through the Raspberry Pi, come into common use is something called Mathematica. 
from Wolfram Industries or Wolfram down in Champaign, Illinois, and that does morphological and shape analysis that will sort things based on their morphology. Um, so there's all kinds of fun stuff that you could do with this as well in terms of having people divide and count shapes uh, based on what it recognizes them to be. So that said, I'll finish up one more time. That didn't work, so I'm going to go this time. I'm going to clear the texture. Interesting enough, right-click, Appearance, Find a Texture, something that's a little bit more interesting, I think. Find a Texture. I'm going to grab that shape. This one was captured actually with the edges on. Um, I'm not sure if the camera was set, but you see I've got a square, a hexagon, an odd shape, what was a circle, and a triangle. I'm going to right click, appearance, generate geometry from, and when we turn that on, right, you see that it actually did something. When we zoom in here, I'm going to stop, go back, zoom in. You see that it does carry around those little tiny, uh, some edge sh stuff. But typically on, for instance, you can take this, you can do your geometric actions and transform into box for that case. So that's going to change that into a box. And you see, ah, interesting, it still retained the um, mesh underneath, I'm sorry, the JPEG image, and I'm going to take this and transform it to circle because I did think that was a box. Zoom out a little bit here. You see the zoom has got to be worked this way. Not always as intuitive as I would like. Uh, interesting, it went and it actually converted them all into little boxes, it would appear. Right click, geometri geometric actions, transform into circle. And it did that one in a circle. And what it's doing is, I presume, is an equal area. Um, pretty common if you're trying to just kind of think of things as kind of point masses. Uh, geometric actions, transform into circle, and you see that it did it about the center mass. So I'm guessing that that has a that circle has an area equal to the area of the rectangle from which it came. So one more use of algo do. Um, that's basically pretty close close to what something called vectorization. That's what you would use an open source program. Uh, Inkscape for or Illustrator, it would go from raster to vector, this kind of concept. Once again, our kids are living it a lot earlier than we used to. Uh, and so as we show them in ninth and below the, how matrices and linear algebra works, in their, we can point to their phones and programs like this, let them play with them, but then also show them a little bit what goes on behind the seams. Thanks for listening.